Hi, this is Jen with Frozen Collection. Today I'll be going over the Cutie Frame and the Jazz 2 uh, sewing machine and how to set it up on the Cutie Frame as well as adjusting the tension uh, to be able to free motion quilt. To set up the Jazz 2 on the Cutie Frame, uh, you will need to raise that up because of the bed of the machine is going to come up a lot higher. Uh, so you follow the instructions as far as raising those feet. Point to that one yet. Um, kind of get used to the machine. Uh, I actually have this stored underneath this table here. And I want to say I had it all the way up on A. Um, easier to have it all the way up than to have to go back and pull it back again. So you just lock those into place. And so now this will slide all the way forward. Uh, I actually have the uh, laser attached to this right now. I've uh, just kind of been dabbling with that. That's actually for me a lot harder than what I thought it was going to be. Now I'm going to kind of push those down a little bit so it kind of grips that so it doesn't slide all over the place on me. And the best thing is to have a level table. I'm actually on carpet, so the more weight I put on it, it kind of shifts it a little bit. So uh, it is best to be on a, a hard surface versus carpet. So we will take the Jazz machine. Let me while I block that and set it on the frame. So we will have these tabs here. Uh, if there's any tools in these pockets, uh, they will be inaccessible. Uh, you can't detach this without having this box on here. So you will let me try to slide it Oop. so that the feet are still on the plate here, which I think is what came off on the back here. These go a little more slower. So all those four feet will be on the machine here. And just adjusting that. Uh, and then you will take the clamps and push them towards the machine and snap them down. Do the same thing for the back side. Push them forward towards each other and latch that down. And sometimes I look at it and make sure it has to readjust. Uh, just because there is the curve on here, I want to make sure it's good and not going to go anywhere. So that is how you place that. And so uh, I like to keep the extension cord from the back side. And what I will do now is I'm going to actually loosen the handles here just a little bit and have them upwards so it's not sliding away from me. And get to it. And I take the cord and let me move the camera. All right, we'll take that and plug the cord into the machine here. And I try to tuck it in between the frame here and make sure it's fully in the back and the cutie frame does come with extensions for the foot pedal and so I will plug that in as well and I will keep that behind the leg and plug that in and then I will run that underneath my table so it is 
out of the way of the legs and the wheels. And as I was putting my thread in and getting my needle threaded, I realized I did forget a important part. And that is dropping the feed dog. So now I will have to try to take this off and drop that feed dog. And it was actually already down. Uh, so basically you'll just have to undo these and slide it out and then retighten everything back down. So all right and a few quick tips definitely make sure you have plenty of bobbins uh, pre-wound so you don't have to stop and wind a bobbin in the middle. Uh, so right now, uh, you also want to make sure that the needle is centered into your quilting put. Uh, there are several to choose from, uh, different designs. It's kind of what you prefer. Uh, this one was given to me by my mom. I'm not quite sure where this one came from, but it actually has a nice little grid uh, with yellow lines and a triangle. So it kind of catches your eye of where that is at. And so the next part is you'll actually put the back pull in where uh, the quilt will wrap around and rest. Uh, so this gets to be a little bit tricky. You'll slide it in on the one end, flip it up. It actually has little nooks there for that to slide into. Press on and it'll actually kind of lock into place. And we're getting caught up on the machine handles here. And there we go. So it's nice and snug. It doesn't go anywhere and it locks down like those. And so we are to the point of attaching the quilt. Actually, I can actually, I think, add a little bit more length on here, maybe another inch. Uh, you want to be able to get to the front and the back pretty easily. And I think I still have some space here. So what I will do is I will lift the clamps and slide it out evenly on both sides. And kind of see where it goes here. I don't exactly want it to hit both sides, but I want it to be able to reach that full potential. And it ends up being about to a number six here. So I will hurt number six on the inside. And I'll make sure it's on the other side as well evenly and clamp that down. This is a little quilt that I made for my niece. Uh, it is her first birthday and I have yet to make her a quilt. So I'm going to make sure that it's all the way up here and slide it underneath there. Uh, I know you can put these on without having them pinned or basted. Uh, it just makes me pretty nervous. So I prefer to keep the pins on while I'm moving it around and then I will remove the pins once I get it in the position that I would like. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Um, it's getting pretty late tonight. I'm hoping I will be able to get this out for the weekend. Um, I was kind of hoping for a snow day, but that did not happen. Uh, usually you typically have some later cloths. Uh, I am kind of skipping that step right now uh, just to kind of get this going. Uh, so I will go ahead and make sure that's straight as I can get it here. Uh, basically how the cutie frame works is you're going to quilt section by section and motion. Uh, I think I might just do it a little simple meandering, but I will see how that goes. 
So I am going to start with the back frames. Uh, you do want to always make sure the name Grace or Cutie is, is facing you when you go to clip these on. Again, here's my pins because it made me nervous. So we'll just make sure that that is clipped. And that'll snap right on there. And then I come to the opposite side and do the same. If I need to remove some of my pins. straight as possible. And another pin here. Take my tie off. And make sure that slid. And that goes down there. So this does have clips. You definitely want to make sure they're clipped. Uh, what you can run into is that you will sew in the bungees if you're not careful, so you do need to make sure those are securely slid into there so it's not going to catch. Uh, to show you again, even though it's kind of far away, uh, so this bungee can actually get sewn into there and it can be very difficult to remove depending on your design. So you just want to make sure it's good and secure on these clips here. I even go as far as kind of tucking them in there when it's this low. Uh, once you start going and it's kind of hard to see where those clips are. So there we go. And we have two more to go. Take this guy. I would move the machine, but I want to make sure I get all those pins out first. There we go. The best thing I found is kind of folding those and sliding it into the clips. Right. I am going to slide the other side. Oh, wait. Not going to happen. that one and this one's already nicely wound so I will go ahead and get this front part done and continue on in just a moment also a quick tip on placing this on here you don't want it to be bounce a quarter off um, you want to be able to go in and grab your finger tip um, you want it to be able to move but be together uh, so once again be able to grab your finger through there but you don't want to be able to grab your entire finger and, and grab that okay so to the important bit so currently for normal sewing uh, you have it set on about two and a half to three for the stitch length uh, for the width, so the zigzag part, uh, typically you want it at zero, uh, unless you're wanting to do an applique or a zigzag stitch. I have uh, the pressure set at two. And right now, uh, just to kind of show you what happens with uh, the tension, uh, if it's set too low, I'm going to show you what happens if it's set too high and how to tune it in. So I will go ahead and start with too low. So I do want to make sure my presser foot is by me. And I do need to have this extended out just a little bit. So uh, the other thing is to make sure that the needle is in the correct position. And it looks like it moved on me again. 
some reason. So I will need to stop and check my needle again. All right. So the settings I currently have uh, for regular sewing uh, is about a two and a half um, length on the stitch length. Um, we're going to have it right at three and a half for uh, the stitch width. Uh, that will put the needle in the center point. And currently I have the uh, tension set on two to kind of show you the differences between low and high uh, for the upper and lower. Uh, I have for the presser, uh, foot pressure I have set at two. So it's kind of the normal. And uh, biggest thing is to always start and check to make sure your pressure foot is down. And you want to hit the needle up, needle down to bring the bobbin thread up from the bottom so you know where you started and stopped. So I will do that. Kind of raise my presser foot here and then grab that. And I have a purple variegated underneath there and you cannot see at the moment. And bring the needle up uh, and down and bring the bobbin thread up so you know where you started. Uh, so um, again I will make sure that the Make sure that the thread is underneath that foot just so it doesn't get caught up on anything. And I think I will need to use my little thread pusher here. And what I will do, make sure that the foot is down. And so typically, if you're doing any curves, you'll want to go speed up, not slow down like you would in a car. Um, you want to do smooth, easy movements. Uh, I am still fairly new at this, um, but I, I've gotten pretty good at, at coming up with the tension. So here we go. This is on two. As you can see, uh, the stitches are quite wide. Let me see if I can get in a little bit closer here. I know that is a pretty light color. Um, let me check the bottom here. See what I got. And let me go ahead and get you to that view. Hold on one So this is the underside. And the setting was on too. So as you can see, there's a little bit of eyelashing going on here uh, with the threads coming through. Uh, you can see it's not very tight. All right, so that was with this set at two. So I will go ahead and push it to four. I will go ahead and push it to nine to show what happens on the highest end. So same thing, I'm gonna start up here. Make sure my foot is down. Needle up, needle down. Needle down, needle up. And lift the foot. And that was not enough to Get that bobbin thread up, so I will do that one more time. Down and up. Lift the foot. 
and get that bottom thread through. So hopefully that was a little easier to see seeing as it was a darker purple on the variegated. So again, I'll make sure that the thread is underneath there. And so this is on nine. Scoot back just a little. Cut on the table. So whoop, foot down. And here we go. And broke the needle on that one. So I will go ahead and change the needle. And again, that was on nine. So that is way too high. Put too much on the thread and broke my needle. All right. So I have it set to number five. So I will go ahead and put that down here. And needle up, needle down. Make sure the presser foot's there. And raise that up. Move it up. Oh, I didn't pull it down. Needle up, needle down. Yeah. Go ahead and pull that guy up. Now we got both threads. And I just kind of lay down that so that way I know where I started. And again, this is number five. And move my foot pedal towards me a little bit more here. Got number five here. And so it looks pretty decent from the top. Looks like some bigger gaps here. And I will take a look at the bottom. All right, as you can see here, we got lots of eyelashing on the bottom. Uh, looks like maybe I had a thread that got caught up in there a little bit. Um, so this is definitely not the setting. All right, so I'm gonna try seven, so a little higher. Uh, see if we can get that eyelashing from the bottom fixed. So pressure foot is down, bobbin thread is up. <laughs> Let's take a look here. So, let's see here. Looking pretty good from the top. Um, I see my thread that got stuck in there. Looks pretty spaced evenly, except for where I didn't move as fast as I should have. That's my error. And let's take a look at the bottom. All right, so we still have some eyelashing here. So we still need to go just a little bit higher. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to about seven and a half. Um, so I'm gonna do needle up, needle down. Needle down, needle up. Lift it up. Oop, that was already up there. Get that bobbin thread up and pull that back. So that is my starting place. Make sure that's down again. And again, this is seven and a half. Um. Let's take a look here. 
a little harder because it's white and I got my thread caught up in here so usually recommend trimming those and let's see here looks pretty good again wasn't concentrating on speed keeping that steady and let's take a look from underneath Alright, again, this is at seven and a half. I'm trying to get good view here. Alright, this is seven and a half. Uh, I think what I'm seeing right now is just the light coming through the holes from the stitches uh, looking pretty good might try going a little higher to eight and see what happens all right so i have it set at eight i went ahead and pulled up the bottom bobbin thread and let's see how she does Check and see here. So, again, I didn't pay too much attention to my speed and keeping that consistent. So, I have a little bit of different stitch lengths. Uh, looks pretty good from up top. Let's take a look at the bottom. All right, this is at eight. Uh, again, most of the holes that you see here are from the uh, holes from the needle. Uh, it's not necessarily, I mean, you can see my hand through here. So that is definitely the light and not the thread. And it is looking excellent here. Uh, go ahead and throw something over it just to show you again that it is not the thread. So it is looking awesome. So that is the setting I will use. So most important thing to remember is every quilt is different. Uh, material batting manufacturers can be different each time. So you do need to check that it is working correctly. Uh, maybe not as drastic as the changes that I did. Uh, I kind of knew it was typically around eight. Um, what I'll actually end up doing is, is seam ripping this out and completing the quilt. Um, but if you have any questions, comments, uh, like, share, subscribe, um, I will, uh, get together a diagram, uh, as well and put that on the comments below. So, and... Yeah, just remember to like, share, subscribe, uh, visit my webpage, www.rosencollection.com. Uh, the products that you've seen on here will also be in the description below. Um, yeah, thank you and see you again soon.